Welcome. I welcome you all to this lecture in the course Samasa in Paninian Grammar and this is the first course on Samasa. We begin by reciting the Mangala Charana. Vishvesham Satchidanandam Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat Charikarti, Bari Bharti, Sanjari Harti, Leelaya. Vishvesham Satchidanandam, Vandeham Yokhilan Jagat, Charikarti, Bari Bharti, Sanjari Harti, Leelaya. <coughs> so far, we have been studying several key terms that are significant in the description of the process of compounding in Sanskrit as described by the Paninian grammar. We have studied the theoretical base, the Karaka theory and the Samartha theory. We also studied the two types of Samarthya, Ekarthi Bhava and Vyapeksha. We also studied the interpretation of the word Samartha, where one word means capable of and the other means the conveyor of the same meaning, Samaha Arthaha. Then we also studied other basic terms like Nitya Samasa, Anitya Samasa, Vaikalpika Samasa and so on. Now in this lecture, we study the steps in the process of compounding. When So derivation of a samasa starts from a sentence, the input is a sentence or a vakya and its output is the nominal root also known as pratipadika. So, the beginning point of the derivation of a samasa is a vakya and the end point of the derivation of a samasa is the pratipadika. The questions are what happens before and what happens in between and the most important question is how is this governed by rules? Are there any principles? Are there any rules? with the help of which these derivations happen? These are the important questions and Paninian grammatical tradition has some concrete answers to these questions. Mm -hmm. So what happens before? So before there is a cognitive stage and in accordance with the description of the process of speech production as described in the Paninian grammar, right from the Paninia Shiksha onwards, the speaker collects the meanings which are stored in the Arthakasha as independent and separate items. And the speaker collects these independent separate items in a merged manner or in the integrated way. Then the speaker selects words from the Arthakasha in correspondence with the Arthakasha. And these words selected from the Shabdakasha, they express these integrated or merged meanings. And this is the beginning and then the next process starts as described in the Paninia Shiksha. Atma, Buddhya, Samityarthan, Manu, Yungte, Vivakshaya, Manakkaya, Agni, Mahanti, Saprera, Yati, Marutam, Marutas, Tu, Rasi, Charan, 
मंत्रम जनयति स्वरम सुदीर्णो मूर्धे पिहतो वक्त्रमापद्य मारुत वर्णान जनयते दीज आर द सोर्सेस फ्रॉम पाणिनीय शिक्षा एंड दीज आर एक्सप्लेन्ड इन डिटेल इन द अदर कोर्स कॉल्ड इंट्रोडक्शन टू पाणिनियन ग्रामर सो द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वेन डज इट स्टार्ट when does the process of compounding start so if we have this as a meaning king's man goes to kashi so the speaker has collected these meanings in his artha kash king's man goes to kashi now the speaker also intends to merge the meanings king's man and if that is the intention the speaker also marks the words in the sentence expressing these meanings and then converts them into the technical elements and this is the beginning of the process of compounding now this is also recorded as a rule by panini in the ashtadhyayi the rule is shashti ashtadhyayi 2.2.8 this sutra means a word ending in sixth subtriplet is compounded with the other interrelated word ending in a subtriplet any of the subtriplets now this is the rule based support provided by panini in this particular process so if you have rajnya purushaha and then shashti is the sutra which says that since these two words rajnya and purushaha are semantically related they are samarthas and so they can be merged together and the compound can be formed so shashti is the sutra that governs this particular process of compounding and it triggers the process of compounding then we have radnyaha and purushaha selected for the process of compounding from the respective sentence from radnyaha and purushaha which are the two padas having nas and su as the sub suffixes we then note these suffixes down so radnyaha and purushaha this is the sentential context and now we are taking the sentential context as the input but we will have to remove this sentential context partially and that is the reason why we then remove nas and su but that we shall describe in a while when we write radnyaha and purushaha as rajan plus nas plus purusha plus su in this particular format this is called alaukika vigraha this is called alaukika vigraha as against these words which form the laukika vigraha by laukika vigraha means this resolution is part of the actual sentence which is actually used by the speaker in the daily communication and it is these words which are part of the sentence which can convey and which do convey the same meaning as the compound raja purusha conveys so radnya purusha is the laukika vigraha used by the people who communicate when we convert it into the technical terms like rajan plus nas plus purusha plus su this is not what a common man recognizes as a valid sentence which is very true rajan plus nas is a technical representation of radnyaha purusha plus su is the technical representation of purushaha however we need to convert radnyaha purushaha into rajan plus nas and purusha plus su for the next process if we have to explain the process of compounding consistently now this alaukika vigraha 
contains the square brackets. So obviously we have Rajan plus Nas, one Pada. So there are square brackets over here. Purusha plus Su, this is another Pada. And so there are these square brackets. And there are other covering square brackets indicating that these are now going to be the input of the process of compounding. Now, the Alaukika Vigraha is a dissolution which is not used in the usage by speakers. This corresponds, however, with the dissolution that is used by speakers. So, Rajannas and Purushasu are nothing but Rajnaha and Purushaha respectively. It is extremely important to note here that conversion of the Laukika Vigraha into this Alaukika Vigraha is by default considered to be the beginning of the process of deriving a compound. This is where compound processes processing starts until the final output is generated after the process is over. So brackets are put right here. So the suffixes that are added, if at all, at the end of the compound, they are called samasanta suffixes. They also get added over here because this is where the samasa begins. In the present case, however, there is no such suffix that is added by the speaker. After this, this bracket is termed pratipadika. So, samasa is termed as pratipadika by the sutra krita dhita samasa ascha 1 2, 46 in the ashtadhyayi. Once the technical term samasa is assigned and the term pratipadika is assigned, then the order of the words is determined, the sequence of the word. Which word occupies the initial position in the compound is important and which one occupies the second position or the final position in the compound is extremely important. This is recorded in the rules 2.2.30 onwards up to 2.2.38. This is a small section that deals with this particular point. So the order of the words get determined gets determined. The word in the initial position of the compound is termed Urvapada and the word in the final position of the compound is termed as Uttara Pada. In the present case, Rajanas Purushasu, this is the order and this is determined by the mention of Shashti in the Prathama Vibhakti, which we shall study later on. So now Rajan plus Nas is occupying the initial position and so this is the Purvapada and Purusha plus Su is occupying the final position so it is termed as Uttarapada. Then comes a very very important stage and in this stage the Sups in both the Purvapada and the Uttarapada are deleted. It is these soups which are the sentential markers, so to speak. It is they which link the Pratipadikas with the other elements of the sentence. It is these soups which make the Pratipadika Samartha. And it is these soups which are the backbone of the sentential structure and precisely them that we remove, by we means the Paninian system, removes. So the next step is Rajan plus zero plus Purusha plus zero. Both Nas and Su are deleted by 2471 and then we get Rajan and Purusha. The next operation is 
the operations that take place on the Purva Pada in the environment of the Uttara Pada. These are stated in 6.3 of the Ashtadhyayi with the Adhikara Uttara Pade, which means immediately before Uttara Pada, there are certain operations that take place on the Purva Pada. Now, no such operation is stated in the present case. So, we still have Rajan plus Purusha. Then we have operations that occur at the end of the process of compounding of the nature of operations which are based on phonological features akin to Sandhi rules. In this case, 827 Nalopa applies which deletes the final Na in Rajan and so we get Raja plus Purusha. Finally, we join them together and we get Raja Purusha. So Raja Purusha we get finally as one compounded word and this one compounded word denotes one compounded meaning as well namely King's Man. And in this compound Purusha acts as the head of the compound to be linked with other words in the sentence and to do several other functions of the head. After merging the meaning as well as the word form, the accent of separate words is also merged and we get Raja Purusha with the final A being termed as Udatta by the Sutra Samasasya 6.223 and then Raja Purusha with the final A Udatta is the finally derived compound output. And this is the end of the derivation of a compound. The compound is ready to be used in the sentence. Since Raja Purusha is a Pratipadika by Kritadhita Samasascha 1 to 46, a relevant sup is added to it. Since it is acting as the Kartru of the action of going, which is denoted by the verbal root Gama, and since the suffix ti is denoting kartru or agent, Raja Purusha is identical with this particular kartru. So, Raja Purusha is added with the first triplet of the sups, namely Prathama Vibhakti, and we get Raja Purusha plus Su plus Gama plus Ti, and then Raja Purushaha and Gachati, and then Raja Purusho. Gachati and finally we get Raja Purusho Gachati as a sentence. We started with Rajna Purusho Gachati with three words. Now we did the compounding process and we compounded the words Rajnaha and Purushaha and we got the output Raja Purushaha or Raja Purusho as one word, one unit. And so now we have the sentence having only two words. However, the meaning is same, the king's man goes, Rajna Purusha Gachati and Raja Purusha Gachati. So there are two expressions to convey this one particular meaning of the sentence, Rajna Purusha Gachati and Raja Purusha Gachati. To take a recap of the stages of derivation described, in this particular lecture, we can say that at the cognitive stage in the Arthakasha there is Sangraha, there is collection of meanings as one unit, meanings which are merged, meanings which are integrated and that is the reason why there is Sangraha of the meanings that takes place. Then there is selection of the corresponding Shabdas in the Shabdakasha. And once this is done, the Alaukika Vigraha starts. And it is Alaukika Vigraha from where the Samasa Saudhnya is assigned. So from Alaukika Vigraha, the derivation of the process of compounding begins. First, we do the Purvapada Nirdharana. First, we determine 
which of the pathas is going to occupy the initial position in the compound and consequently which other pada is going to occupy the final position in the compound and the other positions in the compound if there are multiple constituents if there are more than two constituents then we had the samasanta pratyaya at this particular stage samasanta pratyaya is a pratyaya is a suffix which is added at the end of the samasa which is the final part of the samasa once this is done the subluk takes place which is very very crucial in a way we are removing the sentential context what this means is that the sentential context is the backbone is the bed on which this edifice of the compound is standing tall so in the process of compounding the sub gets deleted but even though it is deleted formally it does remain there in the form of the meaning because meaning is very much there and that is the reason why the pratipadika of this kind is also termed as pada and that is the reason why we can apply 827 naloka pratipadikantasya which has a condition that the pratipadika should be a pada and that is what happens when you do the so look so rajan is a pratipadika but it is in this context also a pada just the sub is deleted but that doesn't mean that there is no subanta so this is subanta just the formal context is being erased for the smooth arrival of the output so subluk is extremely important after the subluk is done there are some purva pada karyas which are done purva pada karyas are the operations that take place on the initial member of the compound then we have varna karya some phonological operations also known as the sandhi karyas and also known as some other karyas which happen only at the end followed by the swara karyas namely the operations of the form of the accent this is how the compound gets derived starting from the cognitive stage and coming up to the swara karyas the accent operations and then we say that now the samas output is ready to be used in the sentence to summarize the derivation process of the compound begins at the cognitive stage and actually ends in the cognitive stage only the process described in the grammar states the processes that happen at the cognitive level so look in this case is very significant the sub is very much there as part of the process of compounding and that is the reason why in order to explain a particular compound a speaker can explain the compound in terms of the sentence using the subs properly and in adequate manner so these processes which are described in grammar namely the subluk etc they are the processes that happen at the cognitive level of the speaker as well as the listener and that is the reason why any listener or hearer can definitely assume and understand the meaning of a particular compound in the form of a sentence so one speaker may ask another one the explanation in the form of a sentence of the compound if one is not able to understand the meaning based on the context one may also confirm the meaning that is already comprehended by asking the other person the explanation in terms of the sentences the processes that we do on paper 
or we do digitally, they are nothing but the representation of all these cognitive processes. So actually, when we say that the Purvapada operations happen, these operations do not happen haphazardly. They happen in the cognitive stage where the entire word gets replaced by the modified word and so on. And by default, all these processes are followed. And there are exceptions, like for example, the subluk process, which is so significant and so basic in the process of compounding, there are some exceptions. That means that there are examples of compounds where the subluk does not happen. Such compounds are generally known as aluk samasas, and we shall deal with them as and when those examples occur, and we shall explain them. But the point to be noted is that these are the exceptions. And Panini has described them in a small section in 6.3, starting with Aluk. The first sutra in 6.3 is Aluk Uttarapade. And Aluk continues from 6.31 up to 25. And these are the sutras which tell you where the look does not happen. So by default, the processes that are described here, they are followed. However, there are some exceptions. We will refer to these texts and we have referred to these texts in this particular course. These are all the traditional sources. And now we shall deal with the other basic principles, other terms and processes in the process of compounding in the coming lectures. Thank you for your patience.